Hi, Tana. I'm um, just looking at your PDF file. It looks good. You have two pages. Your bleeds and crop marks are included. So that is looking good. I'm looking at your InDesign file now. This is looking pretty good. Um, looks like you've got everything out to the bleed lines. One thing about having a stroke around boxes that go all the way to the edge of the paper is sometimes these will get cut off. Um, so it's always probably a good idea just to not have the stroke or either move images like this in away from the edge a little bit more um, so that the stroke mark doesn't potentially just get completely trimmed off because um, that can happen really easily. Um, this type of thing is totally fine, um, but like anything like that you want to show up on the edge with a stroke um, is, is going to be a problem for you. Um, so if you wanted to stroke along the edge of, of your um, depending on how thick it is, I mean, I guess if you went with like a really thick stroke on these things, like, um, I mean, maybe if you made it like six point, um, like that, you'd have a better chance at making sure that it didn't get chopped off too much, but you're always taking a risk there with a stroke on the edge where you trim. Um, so you might want to just not do that at all. Um, okay. I do like the way it looks, it's just the printing process can get a little bit difficult to deal with. Um, you know, maybe not having these on one line, um, and then, you know, moving this down would be good, um, and maybe over to the left a couple of notches. Um, I think these are two different fonts. I would almost make them the same font and just make them bold. Um, maybe make them the same as this so that you're using the same fonts in both of your areas. Like we talked about, um, you know, we could do this, the collection features over 300 plus items um, to get it on one line. I didn't think of that before when we talked about it, and maybe just putting a little bit more of a space here um, so that these two spaces match, and this space matches, and that space matches, and this space matches, and that space matches. So it's just nice and clean looking. Um, yeah, and then this is still a little tight. Um, we can just potentially make this like 14. Um, that looks a little better. I would say, you know, this font looks pretty good, but I would just keep it maybe the same, which I think it is, but then you have a couple other fonts here, like this maybe should just be Rockwell. Um, but yeah, this is looking pretty good. Um, this font right here, you're really pushing it, it's six point. So you might want to maybe just do a command X and take that off and maybe just move these down. Because I'm with your design, I'm kind of noticing this side is really busy. And I would move this over to center it in this box that you have it in. Um, but this side is like kind of busy. And then this side is like really plain. So you could bring that, that contact information for um, Val Hickman over here. I did size this down this to 10, which is totally fine. 10 will show up well, um, even white on a dark background. And then we could just, you know, maybe make this, probably should be Rockwell, um, bold maybe, so that it matches the front page. Um, you know, we can truncate this text too as well. Um, and then, you know, and then you have a little less on the other page, you're able to make this bigger, and this page has a little bit more on it so that it sort of matches, and then we just get the spacing right, um, so that it matches, you know, um, let's see. Yeah. I don't like the fact that this is on its own. Um, you know, we could just 
take this out maybe and that fixes it so sometimes just a little creative editing when you're a graphic designer goes a long way at improving the actual design um, so I'm thinking maybe something a little bit more like that um, would be good um, like I said this could just be all Rockwell maybe bold and well, same size maybe Maybe this should be the same size as, as this, um, so that we're getting that consistency across the board here. Um, maybe something like that. And I'm also thinking, you know, maybe a return after this, or maybe just a, a little bit more letting um, here. A lot of this is really, you know, nitpicky stuff. Um, but when you're working with this much text, sometimes it can make a pretty big difference if you get kind of nit nitpicky about it, I guess. Um, so yeah, maybe something like this would be good. Um, I think that that, you know, and, and actually maybe even reversing the order of these two things, I mean, it just seems like in my mind, um, maybe that would be the way to go with it. But your bleeds look good, and um, I, let me take a look at your links. I think I already looked at them, but I'll look at them again. So I'm looking at your links. They're all PDFs pretty much except for the logo, and the logo looks good. It's in CMYK. The effective PPI looks good. but. Um, I would suggest not using links because you can't tell, or PDFs for your links um, or your images because you can't really tell what color mode they're in when they're PDFs. So um, definitely use JPEGs or PSD files that work well too, um, just because that will eliminate any confusion as, as to whether um, they are in the correct color mode. But other than that, yeah, this looks pretty good. I'm liking what you did here. Okay, talk to you later, Tana.